Well, g'day guys. Well, we're into day six of our trip around Fraser Island, and today we're just going to go on a bit of an historical tour. We're going to check out some of the old logging sites that started around here in the late 1800s. So we're looking forward to that. So what do you reckon, Dave? Yeah, I reckon we'll head in from there, Tim. We'll head down through these inland tracks here. Um, looks like we'll probably have to come a fair way over unless we catch this little shortcut track and that'll bring us around here into Lake Mackenzie. Yep. And we'll go down to Lake Mackenzie and have a look at the beautiful clear waters there. And then we'll keep heading around and we'll go into Central Station. That's where the main logging camps and everything were and we'll check out the history in there. Sounds amazing. Then we're going to head up, then we're going to camp tonight somewhere back yeah. out on the beach. Yeah, again. I think we'll head up um, and we'll camp just south of Yurong yep. and um, go from there. Well, mate, that sounds like a pretty good plan for today. So Yeah, that should fill the day in nicely, I think. So there's only one thing left to do that we've been doing for the last five, six days. Let's pack up and get into it. Pack up and get out of here again. <laughs> Selection out of here. <laughs> oh, what another fantastic spot that was camping there on the beach. Gonna head down the beach, then we're gonna go inland today, check out some of the history from the old logging days. Fantastic trip this has been. One more day to go. Sounds good, yeah, looking forward to seeing um, some of these old ruins, It'd be pretty good. Ah, uh, look at that, that gate right in front of us, old bar, can leave enough room for you. Your memory's pretty good, mate. Sometimes it is. <laughs> Righto, eh? so we're going to walk in and check out these old ruins. This I'm looking forward to. This is just amazing, Fanny. You know, we've just arrived at this old loggers camp. It's Taking us probably about a kilometre walk in, but absolutely well worth it. There's old machinery here from those logging days. There's some old huts, but this is Fenningham, just absolutely amazing to see. Unreal. For the first 70 years of logging on Fraser Island, Bullock drays were used to haul timber to loading points on the beach. Well, logging first started on Fraser Island way back in 1836 by a guy by the name of Yankee Jack Piggott. And the first trees that were taken off Fraser Island were the cowrie pine, cypress pine, and the hoop pine. Right, eh? Well, that was pretty amazing, eh? Certainly well worth the walk in to go and see all that uh, old machinery. Yeah, it's amazing what they've just walked away from, eh, hey, when it um, all got shut down. Yep, yeah, all still sitting there and some in still some pretty good nick. I reckon we find somewhere for a bit of lunch, I reckon. I reckon Lake Mackenzie, we'll have lunch in the oh. car park and then go down for a swim. Oh, that sounds like a great spot, especially on a day like today. We're just heading across to Lake Mackenzie now after leaving that old loggers camp. That was pretty impressive to go and check that out. Now at Lake Mackenzie, it's located about 100 metres above sea level. It covers an area around about 150 hectares, so it's a decent sized lake. And at its deepest point, it's around about 5 metres in depth. So when you come out to Fraser Island, check out as many lakes as you can get into. But Lake Mackenzie, particularly on a day like today, is an absolute must location to go and check it out. Lake Mackenzie. This is where we're going to go and stop off here, have a bit of a lunch, and uh, spend a little bit of time here, I reckon, because this is a really nice spot to come and check out. Certainly a top spot there, Lake Mackenzie. Um, as I say, I highly recommend coming and check that out. Spend a little bit of time here. 
Uh, but we're going to change our plans a little bit. We were going to go into Central Station today. Um, but we've decided now, it's such a nice day. We're going to head straight down onto the beach, find somewhere to camp for tonight. And uh, we'll go to Central Station tomorrow and throw in a couple of extra lakes for our final day. Back out of here wrong now and um gonna find somewhere camp for the night back out on the beach again and have a look how good that weather is just beautiful oh, we're off the beach here it's where the camping zone starts so we'll jump in here and find somewhere to camp for the night. starting our last day of um, this amazing trip around Fraser Island. Uh, what we're going to do today head out to Central Station, have a bit of a look there and maybe a lake or two and see what else we can find before we hit the beach this afternoon for somewhere to camp again. Let's have a look at the land. There's a couple of lakes down from um, Central Station we can go and have a look at. Yeah, that'd you know, be good if we can get a couple more in. That'd be great. They're always good to have a look at. So it um, sounds like a good plan. So we'll go and check a few of those out, I reckon. Might as well because it's perfect weather. <laughs> Station is one of the many sought after stops on Fraser Island and from the 1920s to the 1950s loggers and their families once called Central Station home. The area featured a number of houses and schools and was settled by mainland Australians who moved to the island to harvest wood from the forests. It is situated in the middle of Fraser Island and is surrounded by this stunning rainforest. Just rolling out of there out of Central Station and that's well worth going and check out in there. Plenty of history from the old logging days. So I think now we're going to um, leave here and maybe go and find a lake or two before we head back down on the beach for the night. Well in 1925 the Satnay was the major timber logged on Fraser Island after it was discovered to be resistant to marine borers and soon became very popular in marine use around the world and it's not hard to see why when you look at how tall and straight these trees are. Satanays were sent to Egypt in the construction of the Suez Canal and to rebuild the London docks after World War II. Lake Birribin is a perched lake, meaning it's a contained lake that sits above sea level, made up of only rainwater and has no streams or rivers running in or out of the lake. We're just on our way to have a look at Lake Boomagin. Now, Lake Boomagin is 200 hectares in size and it is the largest perched lake on sea islands 
in the world. And that's a pretty amazing stat. Now, I don't think I've been to Lake Boomjin before, so really looking forward to checking this one out. Forty perched dune lakes can be found on Fraser Island. These lakes are formed in a depression in the coastal dune landscape when the organic matter such as leaves, bark and dead plants gradually builds up and hardens in the depressions created by the wind. Dave's just going to set up camp here. I'm just going to shoot back up to Yurong since it's only just up the beach. Righto, that's me. Yurong, here we come. Bakery, pie for lunch. this magnificent camp spot for the last time on Fraser Island. Uh, I'm just heading now back to the barge, head across back to on mainland Australia and um, see where the next journey begins. So it's going to cruise down the beach, we're not far from, from the barge where we are here but uh, I'll just finish up with probably one last tip from Fraser Island that you really want to take into account before you come over here and that's make sure you know what the tides are doing. So. Be sure to at least look at the tide times before you come over and also make sure you bring a tide chart so you know what the tides are doing all the time. You don't want to come over here guessing, wondering, you know, are the tides going in, are the tides going out? Because you might think, oh, maybe they are going out and you decide to go for a bit of a drive up the beach somewhere and find yourself getting stuck and then all of a sudden you realise, far out, those tides aren't going out at all, they're now coming in. And you've now got uh, fighting against time before that tide comes in and potentially swallows your full drive. So really important, you know what the tides are doing every day, at every time of the day, so that you can plan your trip around how far you're going to drive up the beaches, because you want to be driving the beaches sort of the primo time is about two hours either side of low tide. So work on those sort of a plans, but absolutely make sure you know what the tides are doing and bring those tide charts and you'll have a great time like we have. Well what a fantastic trip this has been, you know we've been up here cruising around Fraser Island checking out all the fantastic places, this is a, one place you really should put in your books to try and get up here if you haven't been here before, this is my second time up here and yeah fair income, I'll be coming back here no doubt about that at all. 
Uh, so much to see. Look, Sandy Cape is certainly the highlight for me. It is absolutely beautiful up there. I just love the remoteness of it. Uh, just absolutely incredible to get up there. So try and get up if you can, but you need to be well prepared for that remoteness. And the beautiful beaches, sunshine, beautiful lakes. There's just so much to see here and plenty of history too from the old logging days. This is just a fantastic place. So get up here and check out Fraser Island. And in the meantime, I look forward to seeing you guys on another one of Tim Bates' Full Drive Adventures. Wherever that is, I'm not sure yet, but see where it goes. Good on you guys. Catch you later on.